In a previous video, I talked about why people shouldn't play Toho games, but there was a problem. I realized they probably won't only because of the genre. Because whenever I ask someone if they play shoot 'em up games, they say, Yeah, I go hard on COD. Snipe your ass. Can camp for days. Knife you in the foot. Press F to pay respects. F for fuck. Anyway, shoot 'em ups. Let's talk about them. Now, I made it look like these games were a plague in the arcades erected by capitalism. But really, not much has changed. Companies used to vendor extra lives, now they vendor parts of the game. But this time, I actually want to endorse, and so the question to ask now is why you should play them. They're short and quick to finish, so shoot 'em ups are generally one hour shorter in length from start to finish, and shortened even further if you surrender after the game acknowledges your incompetence. This is a trait that in theory should prove attractive based on what smartphones are doing to our attention span. Commitment free, uh, so being a genre from the arcade days, there isn't much, if any, progression at all to speak of. Of course, this also means you don't have to hunt 4,000 ships to get that sick weapon mod. Shmups are easy to get a hold of more than ever, but this is mainly thanks to a thing that rhymes with shmeshmishmation. But there are also plenty of indie devs that still make new games. And since they are at this part of the Dunning-Kruger curve, they somewhat know what their games are worth. Which is to say, around 10 bucks and a cup of coffee. Hell, some are even free. But keep in mind, you usually get what you pay for. Looking at the list so far, you might find that the same can be said for one night stands, but it's really more like getting into a relationship. As you'll find that shmups can be quite difficult and has subtle strategies, and the only way to keep winning is to practice. High difficulty. Well, not all shmups are hard, but those are in the minority. Because everyone is out to get you, and to shoot first, ask questions never. I mean, you don't really have a reason not to shoot. And finally, strategy. Well, your enemies can't shoot you if they're dead. In a sense, these games are a lot like Dark Souls, which is why the amazing chess lady resembles this boss from Parodius. The real fun to be had comes from the intrinsic reward of seeing yourself improve and beating the games. If you get a high score, you can even enter your name in the leaderboard. Problem was, it was limited to three letters, and you're competing against 12 year olds. Still, looking for the right shoot 'em up for you can be daunting, and I liken it to browsing Twitch. So here are some notable games you can consider. Volley Fire for the Game Boy was one of the first games I played as a kid, though this is actually more of a dual shooter since you generally only fight one ship, or a friend, which I did not have. Okay, bad example. Um, Geometry Wars, where you're shape shooting shapes and squaring off at other shapes shooting shapes. It's a linear game, but nicely rounded, has neat angles, but I draw the line at some point. Toho, uh, has a rabid fanbase, and has a long legacy of memes. This probably isn't for you though, for reasons explained in my previous video, but let me add one more reason. You're entering weeb territory. Raystorm, uh, you're ship shooting robots. Raiden, um, you're ship shooting aliens. R-Type, uh, you're ship shooting robots. And aliens. Life Force, well this one's a classic. It's this game where you control a ship shooting robots and uh, okay that's enough. But those are actually the straightforward games. The next ones are kinda weird. We have Spark and Sparkle, where you shoot blobs to get diamonds to grab a ball containing a jigsaw piece of a puzzle depicting food. You might not want to play this one in an empty stomach. Ikaruga, where you control a racist aircraft that gets blown up by opposite color bullets. Shot by robots, of course. There's the Toho Photography Games, where you control a girl that takes pictures of ghosts. And there's a clear Fatal Frame knockoff. Silver Surfer on the NES, where the real challenge is in keeping your cool. Let's you become like this nerd of an alcoholic. House of the Dead, wherein you kill zombies with a gun and your ears with bad voice acting. I don't wanna die. My God. Typing of the Dead, wherein you shoot letters with a keyboard, and I'm actually not kidding. Just listen. And Choaniki, the sexiest, manliest, testosterone-fueled shooter you'll never unsee. And for the complete beginners to the genre in general, I have a personal recommendation for the game Death Smiles, a game with no ships, robots, or aliens in sight. Instead, you're a cute witch shooting demons and ghosts, as well as local wildlife, which all seem to have kerosene in their veins. Again, listen. It's a pretty game, with excellent music, and adrenaline-fueled but still casually satisfying gameplay. So try it out, and I'll see you on the leaderboards. Here's my score so you can compare. Now let me just name it. <laughs> Dude, what? No, fuck you game. I didn't enter cab, I entered it.